After many hours of playing Red Dead Redemption 2 Early Access, I have compiled a list of things a new player should know before jumping into Red Dead Redemption 2, as the world is vast and the free roam can be scary. What is going on, fellow outlaws? Outlaw Gary here, and today I am super excited. Today is the release for Red Dead Redemption 2, and it's something we've all been waiting for for a very long time. I want to do my best to give you some solid information, so if you enjoy tips and tricks, guys, guides, how to's, all that type of content. You can find it here on the channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, drop the video like if you enjoyed the list. And without further ado, let's get into some gameplay. So right out the gate, we need to talk about Arthur Morgan. Arthur Morgan is not a robot. He's human like you and I. And like every human, he needs to eat and sleep to be his best. The less you sleep and the less you eat, the worse you will perform when you're exploring through the lands. <laughs> now I know how stupid it sounds. You have to sleep in a video game so you can play the video game. It's, it's dumb. But it's pretty easy to sleep in Red Dead Redemption 2. There's three ways you can go ahead and get some rest in Red Dead. Uh, first way is sleeping at a motel slash hotel in any town around you for a small fee. This fee is normally around a dollar, which isn't a lot of money, knowing that you can easily just rob somebody for a few extra bucks whenever you get low on cash. Of course, this isn't the only place you can sleep because you won't always be near a town. You can also sleep in your gang camp. There is a bed available for you at your camp and it is free to sleep at your camp. You won't have to pay any extra money and it's just super simple. Just walk up to your little bed, look for the little like TP or tent symbol on your mini map and just take a little nap. It's quick, easy, no problem. And lastly, if you're out and about free roaming, the last place you can sleep is a camp you can actually set up. That's right. The camp will allow you to sleep and also cook food anywhere out through the Red Dead Redemption 2 map. It's your best option when exploring out free roaming and as you will become fatigued, you do need to sleep. It's just a thing. Throughout your playthrough, you'll notice these three symbols above your minimap. Those three symbols are your health, stamina, and dead eye cores. Super important to your success in Red Dead Redemption 2. And the best way to keep those cores up is sleeping and eating. We've gone ahead and covered sleeping in the first part of this little commentary. I also want to quickly jump into eating as it is also very important. Think of Arthur Morgan as a real life character. Things you do in game really affect Arthur Morgan and how his life plays out. The more crime you do, the more trouble he'll get into. The more uh, you eat and the more you sleep, the better you'll feel and the better you'll perform. This game really takes a real life look at gaming. It's very different approach and it feels like you may need to actually play Arthur Morgan sometimes like this is real life. Reminding yourself, hey, I gotta eat. Hey, I gotta sleep. It's not common things you do in video games, but that is something you're gonna need to do in Red Dead Redemption 2 to stay alive and to be at your I guess peak performance. Number two is coming in hot as your horse is your best friend. Treat your horse right and it will treat you right. There isn't a time in Red Dead Redemption 2 that you will not be on your horse going from point A to point B and sometimes for a very long period of time. He or she will always be by your side when needed and called upon. And for that exact reason, your horse should be taken care of. Just like you, Arthur Morgan, your horse has needs as well. Of course, your horse does need food and proper rest. The best way a horse can rest is at the stables or by hilting your horse. Throughout your playthrough, you'll notice different areas in cities and camps that you can go ahead and tie your horse up to. These areas will regenerate your horse's cores, which include its health and stamina. If you don't have time to go ahead and put your horse into a stable or hilt them, you can always feed your horse food as feeding your horse food does go ahead and restore its main cores, which are health and stamina. When getting off your horse near stables or even out in the open, if you jump off your horse and hold triangle at times, you get a notification that you can go ahead and like tie your horse up in, in a specific location. Once you do that, that will go ahead and automatically start the regeneration process for your horse. Over time, as you interact with your horse, its levels will raise, including the health of the horse and the stamina of the horse. The longer you play with your horse and be with your horse, the better you are to it, the better it will be to you, especially when it comes to gunfights. If you do not create a solid bond with your horse, it will not be very reliable when it comes to horse mounted gunfights and riding in general as your horse can throw you off its back if it chooses you are not a good companion or fit 
for this horse. In some ways, your horse and in general, the game is very needy. It's not needy to a point where you're going to be suffering and very, very annoyed by the amount of attention Arthur Morgan and your horse and fellow peers are going to need. But it is very, very tasking where you are going to have to make sure you keep yourself alive as well as keep relationships amongst your camp and your horse healthy. Moving on to number three, I am so thankful that I'm able to even do commentaries like this because if I would have known this stuff when I started the game, it would have been a huge help. And this point also will help you the more you progress in the game. Change your clothes. It is so important the clothes you wear. Of course, it's cool to look cool. It's it's nice to look stylish as Arthur Morgan and there are different outfits you can choose from, but choosing the right outfit to succeed in the game is super important. Throughout your playthrough, you encounter all types of elements of weather. Whether it's hot or cold elements, you need to be prepared for all these types of weather changes. There are different clothing options available to you at your camp or at the hotel in town when you go ahead and select to rent a room. These outfit changes are also available at the general store to buy new outfits and it can get a little bit pricey, but these outfits will go ahead and determine your success in different weather types. If it's hot outside, wear less bulky clothes, something like cool and nice and light. If it's if it's cold outside, wear something bulky, something that you know that Arthur Morgan is going to stay warm with. And the best way to know this is right below the description of every outfit and piece of clothing there's a descriptor of what this clothing is good for, whether it's great for hot temperatures, whether it's great for cold temperatures, whether it's terrible for hot temperatures, or whether it's terrible for cold temperatures. There's a descriptor to every outfit and piece of clothing to help you understand what type of clothing you should wear when you are out and about. Of course, if you do not wear the right type of clothing, you can actually die. It's pretty crazy. So if you don't wear proper clothing and it's 100 degrees outside and you're wearing an Eskimo suit for the snow, dudes, you're going to overheat and you will die. It's it's crazy. Same thing goes for cold temperatures. If you wear like summer clothing out in the middle of the winter and it's freezing, you are probably going to die due to the cold. It's pretty crazy. This next tip would have saved me so much bounty money as I'm always getting myself into trouble wearing a disguise when doing crime now that may sound like a super like duh garrett uh you're supposed to wear a disguise when you do crime but sometimes in the heat of the moment you forget to wear a disguise and wear and and sort of forgetting to wear a disguise is a huge issue because you will always have bounties because sometimes the npcs are just stupid they run into your horse when you're riding in the town and then they call the cops on you. It's like, you moron, you ran into my horse. So at times when I go into the city, it's just best to wear a bandana over your face. And the best way to do this, it's very simple. You just open up your satchel, go ahead and scroll through. And then the bottom left corner, you can simply just throw on the bandana over your face. You are taught this in the tutorial when you rob the, the train early on in the prologue. Just in case you forgot, it's a super, super effective tip to keep the lawmen off you and to just stay above the law. You don't want to mess with these cops and you don't want them knowing who you are. It's a very easy way to just hide your identity with this bandana. It's actually way too easy to be honest. It's like you just throw the bandana on and no one knows who you are, even though you're riding the same horse 24 seven. It's a little bit of a weird concept, but hey, it works. The last one comes super, super close to my heart and it's something I want to stress to you guys because it is so important. Save, save, save. Auto saving is something this game has, but it's better to be safe than sorry. I've run into instances where I'm unable to reload to a specific point in the game because the last auto save it, it had was like 45 minutes before my current point. And trust me, it's the most frustrating thing in the world and you don't want to be in the position I am where you get super upset because things just aren't working the way you want them to work. I've noticed where I'll be running through the lands and a stupid NPC will call the cops on me and I'll be in a super important, let's say delivery of some rare pelt or I don't know, I'll, I'll be on a super focused mission and I have to go to a direct destination and I get the cops called on me because I bumped into some lady. It's just the most frustrating thing. And if you do die to the cops, it auto saves that point. So right when you respawn, it auto saves you at the new spot that you just respawned at and you can't revert. So make sure if you always want to revert your saves, just constantly be saving. I know that may sound like super easy, like Garrett, duh, 
saving. Of course, I'm going to save. But literally, the autosave feature is not good. Like, you need to say, please, just believe me. Listen when I tell you, save often. Do not trust the autosave. You're going to be so pissed if it fails you like it's failed me multiple times. I'm like 8 to 12 hours into Red Dead Redemption 2 already. So I'm just letting you know, like, the, the, the more you play, the more it gets annoying because, oh my god, dude, I've lost so much progress because the stupid autosave feature doesn't work. But hey, I, it's okay, all right? I, I'm past it. I'm letting you guys know so you don't run into the same mistakes. So to wrap up this awesome video, hopefully you guys enjoyed my top five list of things you need to know before playing Red Dead Redemption 2. I'll have more videos and how-to guides progressing throughout the story on how to do certain things that so you can go ahead and get ahead of the curve and be most effective when playing Red Dead Redemption 2. I created this list about 7 a.m. with no sleep. I was at like 32 hours of straight gaming and uh, it's 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 been rough. <laughs> it's been rough, but I've been I've been super excited because I've had an awesome opportunity to play Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm going to do my best to provide as much help as I possibly can to your Red Dead Redemption 2 experience. So, of course, make sure you guys tune in later on today with all the new videos because there'll be a lot of them. Now, see you later on today, guys, with a brand new upload. Later, guys. Bye.